Mrs. Valentine, I'm so sorry. I know we're late. I know we missed the wedding, but I know if we hurry up that we can make the reception. You didn't miss it. And if you'll just let yourselves in quietly, it's about to begin. Oh, oh, but I thought that... Well, it was you'll hear about earlier. that all later. Right now, you and Mr. Hunter, just let yourselves in. Okay. Well, I think we're ready. Since I'm a uh, relative stranger to Pine Valley, I think I should introduce myself. I'm Reverend Elizabeth Johnson, a recently ordained minister. Reverend Whitney is my friend, and when he called and explained the um, rather unusual circumstances of this particular wedding, well, there was no way I could disappoint this young couple. Well, I, I want to thank you from the bottom of all our hearts, because yes. you really are the answer to a prayer. Although Thaddeus and I, and uh, Tad, <laughs> although uh, I have just met Tad and Hillary, we did have a brief talk, and I'm very impressed with their sincerity and their obvious love for each other. <clears throat> if I seem a little bit more nervous than the bride and the groom, it's because this is the first wedding ceremony I've performed, so <laughs> please just bear with me. <clears throat> Loving friends, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Tad, will you have this woman to be your wife, to love together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Hillary, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. <laughs> Repeat after me. I, Tad, take you, Hillary, to be my wife. I, Tad, take you, Hillary, to be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. Repeat after me. I, Hillary, take you, Tad, to be my husband. I, Hillary, take you, Tad, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish until we are parted by death. To love and to cherish until we are parted by death. And this I do solemnly vow. And this I do solemnly vow. The rings. Bless O Lord these rings, that he who gives it and she who wears it may abide in peace and continue in your favor until their life's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. I give you this ring as a symbol of my devotion, my respect, and my continuing love. And I promise to share all life's hopes and happiness, and its triumphs, its failures, its joys and sorrows, and all else that life shall hold before us. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. For as much as Hillary and Tad have declared their love for each other before this company by taking solemn vows and by giving and receiving rings, I now pronounce that they are husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Nothing to it. 
shot of the maid of honor. Huh? Yeah, Good somebody idea. really important. Good. Rita? <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Oh, you mean Hillary. Oh, 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 that's oh, what I meant. Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? Wait, wait. Okay. What are you doing here? Wow. You don't look so happy to see me, Taddy. I'm not. You weren't invited, so I wish you'd leave. No, I didn't Robin tell you. There's a good chance I'll be working for your mother-in-law. She did tell me. Be that as it may, I would like you to get lost. First of all, you do not tell me what to do. And second of all, you keep your big mouth shut. And maybe, just maybe, I will do the same. Well, you two have met each other, I see. That's good. Yes, I took the opportunity to introduce myself. Yes. Tad, dear. I wonder if you could ever forgive me for jumping to so many wrong conclusions this afternoon. Oh. I was so distraught when you didn't arrive at the church that I just... It, it's okay, uh, Mrs. Wallingford. I, I understand. Don't worry about it. But I do worry about it, my dear. You are now part of our family. And I don't want to begin our relationship with bad feelings between us. I do owe you a very huge apology. And also a great debt of gratitude. Do you realize, Wade, this young man here, my new son-in-law, mm -hmm. not only saved our bank from losing a great deal of money, he prevented my jewels from being stolen. Mm -hmm. Everyone, may I have your attention? It's time for the bride to throw her bouquet. Oh. <laughs> so now all you single ladies better line up. <laughs> oh, Mom, would you hold this? Sure. Okay. Woo! Come on, everyone. Don't forget your best friend. <laughs> All the single people. Brooke, you love the single girls. <laughs> okay, is everybody ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> Major? Stop us now. <laughs> it almost broke my heart, Natalie. I mean, you don't know how I was counting on that little house. It was just a, a house, Mother. Well, it may be just a house to you, but that was my dream. It was a perfect little place for me to spend my golden years. And then poof, that dream goes up in smoke because some hippie writer got there with the cash before I did. Well, I'm sure you'll find something else. It wasn't the only house in the world. Well, you wouldn't say that about some house that you wanted. And why did Alex go stomping off? It's not my fault. I got... I lost out and had to come back. Alex has been through a very trying time, Mother, and the two of you have never gotten along, even under the best of circumstances. Oh. I suppose that was my fault, too. I have tried to get along with him, Natalie. I really did. Ha <laughs> ha! I think it bothers them, bothers him that he's... Closer to my age than yours. He feels guilty about robbing the cradle. Oh, now stop it. I will not have you upsetting him. Do you understand me? He is my husband, and I think he deserves a little peace and quiet. I never did understand why he didn't like me. I mean, I kept my mouth shut, even though I knew that he was too old for you. You have made your feelings perfectly clear, Mother. And as far as keeping your mouth shut... Well, I'm afraid that just hasn't always been the case. Hmm? Now, wait just a minute. Hold it right there, Missy. I have always been polite to Alex. I have never said a mean word to him. Mother, you don't like him, and you're not discreet about it. I have watched you with Alex. 
It's as if you are baiting him, deliberately trying to upset him. Natalie Marlowe Hunter, that is enough. I am more discreet than you think. Now, if I really wanted to upset him, I would tell him about you and Jeremy, but I have not said a word, have I? This is Steve Bell. A big jump in the nation's business debt. Is it something to worry about? Tomorrow on ABC's World News This Morning, before Good Morning America. Have you guessed yet who killed Amy Lang? This is Joan London, and tomorrow morning our mystery series continues, and we'll show you another clue. Also, Michael Caine tells us about his new movie with Woody Allen. Tomorrow on Good Morning America. Tomorrow, MacGyver's caught in an intrigue of love and espionage behind the Iron Curtain. Then Alexis wreaks her wrath on Dex for his infidelity and finally comes face to face with a sister who's out to destroy her on Dynasty. After, Peter becomes the target of an estranged husband's revenge on Hotel. Can Dorian defeat Tina's need for revenge? Stay tuned for One Life to Live next.